Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'd like to talk about our special offers right now and invite you to join me over on Scribed. So as I'm recording this, we are closing out the beautiful month of November. And I just realized as I've recorded other episodes that um, my Scribed offer is actually better than I thought. So if you join me over on Scribed, which is kind of like a Netflix for books and audiobooks, you get two free months trial <laughs> if you use the link in my show notes or the description of the show wherever you find this we get two free months and I get then one free month added on to my membership so I think that's a really nice um, reciprocity that's why I kind of have been recommending them they don't sponsor these and you know themselves I think <laughs> that's very clever of them like they get the ad you get the ad without <laughs> the sponsorship, but I guess in a sense what they're giving is a, you know, giving me, the person who's making the referral, the one month off of my, um, one month free on my membership. So I really enjoy that. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but if you're a first time listener, so all the cool, you know, new books and audiobooks that you're interested in are out there on Scribd. Um, I have yet to, I've just found like one or two things that, you know, have been recommended by someone to read that I have not been out there, but really everything that I've searched for is there most in both formats. Like an audio, if there's an audio book to the book, then that's typically out there as well. So, and then my, all of my books are out there on Scribd too. So, um, you can read all of my books for free on ebook format over on Scribd. The other special offer I have right now is all of my paperback books are on sale over on Amazon. Um, It's really hard to kind of price them all the same because you have to work with printing costs and the size of the book matters and all that blah 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 (laughs) because I really just wanted to price them all like really low as a sale but somehow that just doesn't work out because the cost to print them um, comes into play and it's at least like three or four dollars just to even print each book which means you know that's that doesn't even that's like not I don't even see that so most of them are seven dollars and 77 cents which is almost all the way down to wholesale just like right above printing costs with the exception of Kyanite Fairy Wing which is um, a bigger book so it costs more to print I think she is $9.99 and for our December um our December hello to the month of December that I'll be recording later on the um, middle of next week. We'll be talking more about Kyanite Fairy Wing. So I hope you will join me in one of those places, either a paperback um, or over on Scribd. So thank you so much for listening. I can't get my phone. Is it this? Hello everyone, hello and welcome to the podcast. This is the fourth installment in the Turkey Pot Pie series of Abigail Smile, the Spectre and Book Coven series. I think right now it's like the Coven series and we're focused on Abigail Smile, who's part of the Spectre and Book Coven. Um, If you're kind of wondering where this is going and if you've been listening this whole month of November, then um, what I thought possibly would be the end of our story as it relates to Abigail and Dakar at the um, at the Argyle seems like it's going to carry over into December a little bit. So all of our characters, Maggie and Dwight and Lily and Lila, I think we've got a couple more weeks left of... Um, stuff going on with them so probably till mid-December and then that's when the show will take a little bit of a break for the holidays so let's go ahead and get into the story so when we last left off with Abigail 
in the car. We were. <laughs> Where were we? We were on chapter 10, and that was. Oh my goodness, I don't even remember now. <laughs> so let's just. Oh, let's go back and look at that. Oh my gosh, so many bloopers today. Let's just move on to chapter 11. Little lessons all in a row. And maybe while we are, there's a plane flying overhead. So maybe while we're doing that, I'm going to just quickly look back to chapter 10 while you all get into sacred space. How's about that? How's about you get yourself some tea or coffee or something just to relax? You know, we always take a deep breath together, so let's do that now. There's a little plane flying overhead. And when we last left, chapter 10, Lily and Lila were waiting at the train station is what was happening <laughs> and they realized that Dwight had an accident and he wasn't going to be showing up for a while so let's just call in for those of you I like to talk to just really quickly about the different experiences you can have as you're listening to the story um, some of you just come here maybe for the story others come for you know quote unquote the ASMR maybe I call it I guess unintentional ASMR we are outdoors again today there's a bit of wind that you might hear there was just before I started recording this like so many deer around me deer coming back from I guess their <laughs> nightly wanderings I don't know there was like three buck and two or three female deer and some little baby deer and I was trying to be so quiet so not to spook them because if they get spooked um, they can kind of run in the wrong way and kind of go in a direction that is not going to be for their best and I as good so anyway but we're here now the other thing we can do as you are listening to the story if you're interested in this is just choose the what I call the full full experience <laughs> um, inviting in any guides who um, might have messages for you as you're listening to the story just putting yourself somewhat into a meditative, calm state of receptivity where, um, you know, you invite in visions or things to come to. Because there's a lot of metaphors sometimes in these stories, too. And so you may just, you know, something may come to mind or your guides may present themselves to you and share something with you as you're listening. Um, if you choose that sort of receptive state. The other um, thing you can choose if you desire is more of like a healing um, receptivity. There's downloads and activations and light language that come through my voice um, meant for healing, meant for um, activating, you know, dormant parts of your DNA, meant to help in your awakening process if you're on the awakening or spiritual journey. So if that's also something you want, then choose that or choose none of that and just choose to listen. Like it really doesn't matter. Um, there's no set way of listening. You can just kind of choose the level of experience that you desire. So without further ado, take one more deep breath and kind of get ready for reading. And there's a lot of car noises, giant trucks going by. <laughs> and let me just... Let me just get set up here. Hold on. Okay, <laughs> back again. You know, I like doing these audios, but sometimes, you know, <laughs> there's just things that come up. So let's go ahead and get into chapter 11, chapter 11 little lessons all in a row. We have now entered the part of the story where you, dear reader, must use the power of your words to right the wrong that has been done here. We now have a very precarious situation in the forest, and through no fault of her own, Abigail has become involved in something that Dakar should really have warned her about way in advance. 
for seeming to have taken her along under the pretense of a nice relaxing week seemed so out of what the original intention was. Was Abigail led along unknowingly, entering into some sort of enchantment spell right alongside Dakar, who unknowingly, we thought, had responded to some random ad to get him to the inn? Was everything really all connected, and could this really be some untimely end for poor Abigail? Let's flip the script, dear reader. What would be the ending that you would like to see happen? Would you want to see Dakar and Abigail have a beautiful, peaceful week at a secluded, romantic bed and breakfast? Them playfully running through the moors and making love under the duvet? Or would you prefer to see them embroiled in this drama? The bringers of the light ask you to choose in your heart, for as you are pondering which way to drive the ending, Lila and Lily Amberton had entered into some sort of trance state. They had been unknowingly called into action, and they had no idea what they were doing to help out here. Both girls sat motionless, eyes closed, and were being led by a stout but motherly good witch through the astrals by their etheric hands. They were then seemingly plopped down right in the middle of it all. What was left sitting at the train station only a vision of the girls. Dwight's four by four seemingly detained by some random accident, and Dakar seemed to be out of his own ability to do anything else in the matter at hand. But he knew better. He trusted in the light. He could see the bigger plan when others could not. He had, of course, been sworn to secrecy. And like some warlock 007, he had knowingly entered into this whole debacle. But why, you may wonder. And so we ask you to keep that under your hat for now, trusting that all will be revealed in right timing. Lila and Lily were etherically plopped down right in front of the taloned beast whom Maggie now called Dragor. Dragor eyed beautiful Abigail, no more impressed if she had been a deer or a wood nymph. Okay, girls, it's time, Polly Williker said, as it seemed that time had stood still right at this moment. Just like we've been practicing at the academy, she said. Both girls joined hands and encanted together in sing-song. By the power of three, we are here to take thee out of this mess and back to the rest. You need to believe that the power of three can change everything, and so it may seem that this time the dark knows just how it goes, but we turn the clock back before this attack. Three times they encanted the spell, just as Polly had been teaching them every night in dream time. She needed the power of two to make the power of this very special three spell. And at the encanting of the final verse, all time reversed. Both girls woke with a start, still sitting with their bags at the train station. Polly Willikers was returned to her bed with Scratchy by her side. Dakar and Abigail sat on the edge of their bed in room 251, both a little bleary-eyed and confused. Maggie Chalmers held up her hand to see a strange red mark on it. She felt funny inside. And Dwight had left the car by the side of the road to play innocently alongside the magic ones of the moors. Chapter 12 Lila and Lily. The train station captain approached the girls who were still sitting at the station, even though the clock had struck twelve midnight. Miss, are you expecting someone to pick you up? he asked, hoping he wouldn't have to stay there much longer. He'd had a long day. Our ride has been detained, Lily said, feeling tired herself. It was different working in the astrals with headmistress Polly. She liked it, but she always felt discombobulated upon returning back to her body. He's had an accident along the moors, she said with complete certainty. We need to get to the Argyle, Lila said, feeling hungry again. I think we'll need someone to take us there, she said, hoping there was someone so late. We're far from home on holiday by ourselves. The station manager huffed a little disconcerted by the apparent mishap. He would have to handle this. The last time he had ignored a lost child, he had paid dearly for his mistake. Lila and Lily gathered their things and followed the station manager out of the waiting area. I want you girls to wait at the pub, he said. I'm going to call this uh, Argyle Inn, you say? Yes, Lila said, they're expecting us. Mr. Carruthers called the pub manager forward 
and asked her if she could keep the children there while they worked out the travel details. The inn was over an hour away by car, and no bus or taxi would go out there at this time of night. Too many superstitions along that trek of the moors. I've heard all sorts of funny stories about that place, Mrs. O'Malley said to Clive, the station manager. Why would two young girls be going there alone, she asked. Beats me, Clive said. But there are, so we've got to handle this tonight. Dearie, are you sure it's the Argyle? Clive asked Lila. Yes, sir, she said, feeling like she needed to lay down. The Argyle with the ghosts. Both Clive and Mrs. O'Malley looked at each other with disdain. Who would send their children to such a place, they both thought. Clive pulled out his cell phone to let his wife know he'd be late. Mrs. O'Malley dialed the town registrant's office, hoping Peg, the telephone operator, would be on duty. "'May I help you?' Peg answered. "'Oh, good. Sorry to wake you, love,' Mrs. O'Malley said. "'We've got two young girls here needs to get to the Argyle. Can you please ring them up for me, dear?' "'Hold, please,' Peg said, looking up the number to the inn. "'I'm connecting you now,' Peg said, waiting for someone at the inn to pick up. "'Argyle?' Melly's sleepy voice said on the other end. "'You're on with the Argyle,' Peg said, disconnecting herself from the call. "'We've got two little girls here says you're supposed to be frequenting your establishment tonight, dear,' Mrs. O'Malley said. "'They said the ride's been detained.' "'Oh, hell!' Melly said into the phone while also yelling out her bedroom door to Callie. "'Dwight's gotten himself into something,' she said to Collie, who was putting up the clean dishes. "'We'll send someone right away,' Melly said. "'I hope they're okay,' she asked." more than needing to know. They seem fine, dear, just sleepy. You should let their parents know, Mrs. O'Malley said, eyeing both girls who had lain down in the nearest booth and were already fast asleep. I expect there'll be some explaining to do, she said. We'll take care of it, ma'am, Melly said, silently cursing Dwight. What in holy heck had happened to him, she wondered. He was definitely going to have some explaining of his own to do. As Melly disconnected the call, she reached for her cell to dial Dwight. He answered after several tries, and what Melly heard next chilled her to her very core. Chapter 13 Dwight and Maggie Dwight couldn't have cared less at the moment if his cell was ringing or not. With a half-hearted sigh, he answered the incessant ringing of the call. What was all he said before dropping the phone down to the ground? Maggie stood before him and she wasn't happy. Dwight, she said in a somewhat beguiling tone, but one that he had known before meant she was bent on business. You have greatly disappointed me. You had one task to get those girls to me and at any cost, and I wandered out to find you here. What were you thinking? "'Ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just that I've been wanting to see them for so long now, and they were calling me to play. I, I couldn't help myself,' he said, feeling a little nervous now. "'You didn't cross the mistress.' "'Well, Dwight,' Maggie said, already very upset and quite perturbed at the latest happenings at the inn, and to know those two girls were part of it actually made her more mad at herself than anything. How had she missed them?' It was that Dakar, he did something to her, and she had almost had him, and disposed of that meddling little witch he cared for so much. I have a job for you, even if you haven't quite proved yourself to me yet, Maggie said, putting on the charm, although she felt nothing for Dwight, and she didn't want his soul, at least not yet. Bring me the handbook and don't dawdle, she said, scaring the pixies away with a snarl and a wicked showing of her pointed and very scary teeth. She shifted back, showing Dwight her precious face, the one she knew he could fall for at any moment. All she had to do was put on the charm. Well, uh, okay, I guess I can do that, he said, not quite knowing where this was going. He thought he might actually have an upper hand on this one, though. What's in it for me, he said, wanting to secure his out, if he could. For if he did this one last thing for her, then maybe she would let him leave. I could let you leave with her, Maggie said, knowing full well he knew the her that she was referring to. I'll let you both leave, together and unharmed. Dwight swallowed hard. And all I have to do is get the book? 
He wanted to make sure it was nothing more, like killing someone or something more sinister. He knew how Maggie's head worked. I don't want to be involved in anything like that. Not anymore, he said, feeling terrible guilt about all the doings he had done for her in the past. And you'll let us both go? Of course, love, Maggie said, laying on the charm now. You can both go when and if you bring me the handbook to Los Santos. You and that charmer girl can go. Where do I meet you? He said, feeling himself falling under her spell and almost unable to see clearly what she truly was now. She saved that for the kill. Or worse, the sucking someone dry of their very soul work she did when she was done playing with her unwitting victims. Dwight often wondered what it would take to capture and subdue her. He didn't know where her powers came from, but he wished he could find someone to help him get rid of the thing that had overtaken her, for he had known her before all this. The Maggie Chalmers he knew before would not have hurt anyone. He wished and hoped he could really help her in a good way. He at least had to try, and it wasn't going to be that handbook de Los Santos that would do the job. He had to find someone else, someone working for the light, someone stronger than her. Okay, I'll do it, he said, a plan already forming in the deep recesses of his mind. Beautiful darling, I knew you would, she said. Meet me back in my chambers in 12 hours sharp and don't come without the book. I'll know, was all she said, disappearing into the ethers. Dwight fished around on the ground for his cell and ended the call that was still on the screen, but not before Melly finished jotting down the notes she would need to send to the bringers of the light coven. Dwight really needed help, and he definitely couldn't work alone. Melly grabbed her keys and pulled the old jeep out of the garage. She would have to pick up these children on her own, but not before she made one stop to visit a very special person. She walked silently up the creaky staircase and to the old wooden cabinet. She deftly managed the old lock and, reaching in, pulled out the handbook de los Santos, tucking it into her bag. She made her way out the back staircase and into the jeep. Revving the engine, she tapped the address she needed into her garment, put the jeep in, ra- in drive, and prayed to her angels to please help her on this quest. If everything worked out, She would have everything that was needed before Dwight's 12 hours were up. Whew. (laughs) It's getting very busy. So I'm going to stop there. That's actually three little pages or chapters. And I started to write the next chapter last night. And as I did, I was like, um, there's no way that this story, this particular story is going to finish over the next couple of days, which is usually we there's the howling again. There's like howling. I don't know if it's, I think it's coyotes. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I just have to, uh, to, to kind of tell you or share with you what's around me. And maybe it'll come out in the recording. But anyways, I was writing last night's chapter. um, Oh my gosh, tongue-tied. Maybe some of you are tongue-tied. As I was writing last night's chapter, I realized there's no way that this this story is going to end in the next couple of days by the end of the month, is what I'm trying to say. And then Spirit kind of showed me like, no, we've got another um, couple of weeks to go for this one. So this is a pretty hefty little story between um, all of these people that are here and I'm really interested to kind of see where it's going. Oh my God, surely you can hear that. It's so loud. It's got to be coyotes because there's too many of them all howling at the same time. So those are some spirit animals coming through for you. Um, Definitely the deer. There was more than I've ever seen like with me this morning, like three buck in a row. That's very divine masculine. So I was really happy to see that. And then these um, coyotes howling in the background this whole time, just very magical. Um, And let me just share, since we're going into December with this story, I will just share a little sneak peek of um, the theme for December. And what what I'd like to, what I'm going to try to do at the beginning of every month is just come on kind of like with our theme for the month, our book of the month, because I have books out there 
um, that I like to have like a book of the month that we focus on in some um, some alternate um, podcasts that don't necessarily have to do with the Abigail story. And so next month for December, we are going to get into Kyanite Fairy Wing, the missing shadow books um, as our December story. And the theme of the month I already know is going to be Believe. So I have a um, just a little bit of an intro that I'll be sharing in that podcast, along with a lot of the just magical backstory of that book. And so hopefully you'll join me for that. And maybe we'll do a little bit of um, pulling some cards or something kind of fun um, and try to figure out how to do that in the realms of a podcast. <laughs> um, I haven't kind of figured that out yet. I think I may do that and maybe a companion video over on my YouTube with the cards, something like that. So we shall see. So I'm going to go ahead and leave us here. And thank you all for joining me and um, I don't know what that was <laughs> there's a lot of weird things in this audio so um, if you're just having kind of a, a funny time right now like I'm recording this around the um, the oh heck the Gemini lunar eclipse like the day before so just kind of all sorts of magical kind of interesting things to watch out for as you listen to the podcast this time I'm going to release our guides now and I'm going to thank everyone who was with me on this particular little podcast journey. And um, always, you know, if there's comments or things that have come up for you during the podcast, your own interpretations of maybe what you heard or what in the story or what you heard around you that could help others out, um, leave those in the comments of either the video, if it's you're finding this over on YouTube, or uh, some places that the podcast is at, you are able to comment. And if not, then just join us over on Instagram, either at um, TLC Books, which is where I post the page a days, or you can join me over on TLC for the Soul, which is kind of more the overarching umbrella of all the work that I do. Um, and we have, you know, talks about awakening over there, and I post channelings and cards and all sorts of fun stuff um, on that place. So until next time, we will see what's going to happen with this handbook de los Santos. Oh, there comes another baby deer. She's a little baby. She's going in front of me. More deer. Oh, she's so cute. She's going home by herself. Oh, she's not with anybody. She's pretty bold. Usually they go with their mamas and she's alone. So we will see what's going to happen with this handbook de los Santos. I'm really excited. And we'll see you all again in the next episode. Take care. And now a word from our sponsor. This episode has been brought to you by the Pixies of the Scottish Moors, inviting you to step out and enjoy the sounds, the feel, and the wonders of nature. Meet them outside the Argyle Inn b, &B at Blue Pond Lake, or follow them as they dance through the moors each and every night, just waiting for visitors to join them and have fun in that sacred space. So thank you for joining us. We will see you again next time. Take care.